Hey, how are we doing in here? Are we making some Disney magic? <laughs> it's good to see you, Billy. I just got out of the meeting with the studio execs and showed them your drawings, and they loved your concept. You were blowing minds in there, man. They just had a couple of notes that they're hoping you can implement before the deadline. And uh, yeah, so they just wanted his nose to be a little smaller and his chin to be a little bigger. They wanted him to be a little taller. They are thinking that maybe his goatee could be a little more pronounced. Maybe he could have more of like a Robin Williams twinkle in his eye. Maybe he could just look more like Robin Williams in general. You know what I mean? Uh, and they just want to make him look very merchandisable. I know we promised Robin Williams that we would merchandise him and all, but you never know. Uh, so... Anyway, uh, just a couple of small notes. Uh, if you could implement those by the deadline, which I think is, um, I think that's tomorrow, right? But I'm sure you can do that. <laughs> You're a great artist, aren't you, Billy? <laughs> yeah, so no problem. Just uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, make sure you implement all those notes and uh, I'll come check in on you tomorrow, okay? But they loved it, man. They love you. Keep up the good work, all right? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Welcome to Disney Animated, a game where you and up to three friends become animators at the Walt Disney Company, tasked with creating some of its most iconic material. But your jobs are on the line, the deadline, that is, and it's swiftly approaching. In order to successfully avoid unemployment, you and each of your friends must complete your own separate film before that deadline arrives. To do that, you'll need to complete your film's background, populate it with characters, and complete an arcane task unique to your movie that will allow you to siphon your film's villain out of the gas tank of the universe and plop them into your project. Finishing your movie will hinge on your ability to interface with this channel of action tiles laid out in the middle of the table. On your turn, you'll select which of these actions you'd like to take, then shift the tile to the end of the line, moving all the others to the right as you do so. This is important because the higher the number next to the action when you select it on your turn, the more powerful that action will be, and the more stuff you'll be able to accomplish, and the less stuff everyone else at the table will be able to accomplish if they decide to take the same action on their turn. All players share this action river, so what you do on your turn will substantially influence the turns taken by your teammates. Manipulating the flow of these actions to everyone's advantage requires you and your group to constantly work together to identify goals and build plans. Speaking of building plans, you can actually do that in this game without worrying about them being frustrated by a sour roll of a die or a bad card flip. The AI that will be chucking spanners into your works will politely wait to do so until everyone has taken a turn in a round and the order in which players take their turns will remain static for the entire experience. So your combo constructing ambitions will never be thrown off by arbitrary shifts in turn order. Before the first player takes their turn in a round, you and your friends will be able to look over the action lineup, discuss what everybody wants to accomplish in that round, and then execute your strategy to the letter. To sweeten up this plan forming pastry, each film has an extremely powerful ability with a team-centric focus, like bolstering someone else's actions, freezing actions in place, or even enabling multiple players to take an action simultaneously. And every time a player adds a character to their background, they unlock a special power exclusive to that particular character that they can activate in addition to taking an action on their turn. As the game unfolds and everyone adds components to their films, you and your teammates will become insanely powerful powerful, able to manipulate the deck and the discard piles seemingly at will, you will be almost unstoppable. And unstoppable you may indeed become, but only if you lay your plans carefully and manage the people who insist on obstructing them. The villains. Aware that the movies you're working on spell their doom, the villains of your films will make a nuisance of themselves as you work. If your team does not commit resources to thwarting their sinister schemes, they will suck days away from your life like Count Tyrone Rugen's torture machine in The Princess Bride. Tell me, and remember, this is for posterity, so be honest. How do you feel? 
<laughs> Disney Animated's greatest strength lies in its ability to foster teamwork. The individualized components and the separate player boards makes it look like a game that will put distance between players, but all of that asymmetry has been designed to produce the opposite effect. Each film brings a distinct presence to the group, and each are helpful in any lineup. During your collaboration sessions, which will be frequent, each player literally has something to bring to the table. This is a spectacular and largely successful way to keep everyone involved. And the fact that everybody has a fair amount of stuff going on between their unique characters and their different background boards and their separate villain objectives means that one player can't really call all of the shots, but this can work to the detriment of the esprit de corps if a player feels like their movie isn't given its due priority in team choices. The design requires that at least one player sacrifices progress on their film every round in order to give somebody else a leg up or knock out the villain. That can result in a situation where you are consistently making unsatisfactory turns for the sake of the group. It must be emphasized, however, that in order to win, all movies have to be completed before the deadline. So if you are stuck in the tedium of villain management in the early game, you can expect that generosity to come back around to you as your teammates boost you over the finish line. Disney Animated has a system of scalable difficulty that relies on the distribution of these calamity cards. At the beginning of each round, you'll deal a number of them along the side of the central board. As players take their turns, they'll have the option to knock out some of these calamity cards by discarding cards and paint tokens, or perhaps taking certain actions. Once every player has taken a turn and you've moved the token closer to the deadline, the villain will activate once for every calamity card left over, and if none remain, they won't do anything. To make the game easier, you deal fewer Calamity cards every round. To make it harder, you deal more. At lower difficulty levels, the game tends to feel procedural and sanitized. The Calamity cards can be removed very easily, and then players are free to work on their films unhindered. As you add more Calamity cards, they start to require more attention. This can go one of two ways. Number one, this makes the game less Fun. Because you're devoting more of your resources to managing Calamity, you aren't able to accomplish as much on your turns, which is lame. Or you can choose to play the odds and let the villain's ability trigger a few times, which can actually be really fun. Most villain abilities will only trigger if you flip a certain card. Leaving a couple of Calamity cards up in that row doesn't necessarily mean that the villain abilities will happen, it just means they have a chance to. Adding more Calamity cards to the game usually creates this push your luck effect where you choose to risk allowing that villain ability to trigger a few times in the hope that it won't go off. The components in this box are rendered in dazzling color and are for the most part well crafted. Everybody flips for these tiny tuck boxes that hold the individual player components, myself included. They're just so cute. Whenever somebody passes by the table and they see this set up, they immediately want to play it. But these background boards are a disaster area. When you first crack open the box, these tiles will be fitted onto the board very nicely. They're supposed to be popped out, you know, like panels on an advent calendar. These boards are double layered, you see. And at least for my copy, the glue holding the two halves of the board together got a little goopy and seeped underneath the tiles that I had to pull out with my fingernail. When I did pull them out, this happened. Now I am, without a doubt, way too invested in the welfare of my board game components. I want them to stay in mint condition. I will invite people over to my house to play with me just so I don't have to put my boxes into the car where they risk getting scratched. I keep a list of people in my mind that I won't play card games with because of all the things they do to cards when they're thinking. When I have nightmares, they're of people doing this. And this. And this. 
and and that's crazy. I'm crazy. I know, but I don't think you have to be a board game component control freak to get frustrated when the components in your brand new game fall apart as you try to play it for the first time. But that's not all. These tiles will not fit back into the boards after you've popped them out. Most won't go in without a generous application of force. So every time you take this background action, which you'll be doing frequently throughout the game, you risk ruining your boards even further by like, I don't know, dropping a Great Dane on them. Or you've got to start the game with an awkward disclaimer being like, sorry everyone, the tiles don't actually fit into the background boards. Please don't try to force them into place. And then you spend the entire game looking like a maniac because you cringe every time your friend uses the background action, which I repeat will be done frequently throughout the game. And they feel awkward because they want to respect your property, but they're not sure how to do that without avoiding the background action altogether, which they can't do because they have to complete their background in order to complete their film. And, and then at the end of the game, everyone just ends up with these bumpy backgrounds that have these character cells floating on top of them and doesn't matter. I mean, not really, but it's just so awful. Horrible player boards aside, Disney Animated has everything one might look for in a cooperative experience. An appealing theme, the AI is a snap, players have asymmetric powers that interact with one another in exciting ways, players have to pool their talents and work in tandem with one another to succeed, and every round brings a host of decisions to be made. It all comes neatly tucked into a $40 box, and it doesn't hurt that it's covered with art from classic Disney films that I and my friends and family adore. If you have a Disney lover in your life, or you have friends that like Disney that you want to play games with, this is an easy recommendation. Do I wish that they'd replace the villains with studio executives making demands? Well, yeah, yeah, I do. I think that would have been hilarious. Will this game have people screaming, laughing, sobbing uncontrollably? Well, I haven't seen any of that happen yet. People are usually too busy thinking to do any of those things. But it is a solid title that will dependably elicit from your friends and family a series of hmms and a huh or two, or perhaps an aha every now and again. After the game is over and the dust has settled, you can all kick back, discuss the game's highlights, and speculate on what board combinations you might want to try in the next session. And that is our review of Disney Animated by Prospero Hall, published by Funko Games. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I hope you found it helpful and maybe a little entertaining. If you did, hit that subscribe button. Let us know how much you liked it in the comments section, and we will see you in the next one.